In this presentation, we're going to add transactions related to capital expenditures with the use of our bank feeds. In other words, we're going to have transactions going through the bank feeds that have been expended for capital expenditures or investments in the company in the form of property, plant, and equipment or depreciable type of assets. We will be categorizing those so that they will be populated correctly then on the financial statements, balance sheet, and income statement. Get ready to move because we're dropping in with WAVE. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our reports. We're going to go down to the reports on the left-hand side. We're going to be opening up the favorite two reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. Let's first open up the balance sheet. So there we have that. As it opens up, we're going to duplicate the tab. So what we're going to do is go up to the tab up top. We're going to right-click on that tab and duplicate that tab to have a balance sheet report on the right. Then we're going to do stuff on the left. So we're going to go back to the left for now. And then I'm going to go back down to the reports. This is the stuff we're going to do now. We're going to be opening up the income statement or P&L or profit and loss. So let's click on that one. Opening up the P&L. Then we're going to duplicate that tab. Going back to the tab up top. Right clicking on that tab and duplicating it. Then we'll go back to the balance sheet on the right. We're going to be changing the date back to 2019. That's when we entered the data or uploaded the data uh, within. Let's go ahead and update that report. And then we're going to do the same for the income statement. We're going to go into the income statement. We want this for 2019. So I'll make that 2019 update this report. Now we've already included the bank feed. So you'll recall that the bank feeds, if I go back to the balance sheet over here, is included. All the feeds are included in the cash side of the transactions up top. And we can see that if we were to go to the show detail down below, then we can run this report and we can see all the cash transactions. The other side of it all went to the income statement as by default. Anything that's a deposit was put into income. Anything that was uh, a, a expense or a decrease to cash went into expense and they went into these uncategorized. We are now working on categorizing them. Now, within the expense side of things, there may be times where there's some things included in the expense that aren't actually expenses, right? These are outflows. These represent outflows that happen here. One of them might be a capital expenditure. Whether we're not, we are on a cash basis or an accrual basis, if we have large purchases, at least you know, even for taxes, if we're on a cash basis system for taxes, they still make us do an accrual thing, which is to put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it. So we're going to need to dig out any kind of items here that are going to be capital expenditures, dig them out, put them on the books as an asset. So that's what we're going to look through for now. To do that, let's go over to our first tab, go back on down to the bank feed information, which is going to, is going to be <laughs> under the transactions and then under accounting and then under transactions. Accounting first, then the transactions. All right, so we're going to look for these and basically you look for kind of like the large dollar amount items. So notice we checked this one off, so that one's good. I could filter to remove the items that have already been you know, checked off, but I'm going to leave them here for now until we go into the second month. So then I'm going to go down. I'm going to say, all right, that's a bank charge. This is uh, this is a vendor. Edison, as we did, Gibson is a vendor. So we'll talk about that later. Here's Amazon. Amazon, I'm going to say, is a uh, is something we purchase, and, and it's a large dollar amount. So we'd have to look into that one. And, and I would suggest that anything over a certain dollar amount, you might want to start, to, you know, kind of looking into and say, oh, is this something I need to capitalize as opposed to expensing it? There's no real rule. Uh, of what that dollar amount is but as the as the amount gets higher it's more likely that you'll need to capitalize an item rather than than expense it also note that considering it is amazon here you might purchase many different things from amazon and <clears throat> therefore it might be a little bit difficult to categorize into one particular expense category so this is one that may not be easy to memorize time and time again in other words it may not be easy to memorize for the system to kind of repeat this transaction in the following month if it sees amazon it's not going to be able to just say hey this is the account we should go to typically because you may have different expense accounts that you buy from amazon and if you buy something large then you want to consider those items as well because you may need to capitalize them as we will do here so we're going to assume this was a purchase of furniture and fixtures so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the drop down and see if we have a category for furniture and fixtures so it's not going to be an expense item now we're going to look for an assets type of item. We need an asset type of item for the furniture and fixtures. So we go down here to the assets and we only have the asset of uh, the accounts receivable and no other assets. So we need to basically add a new account. 
Now we can do that right in this screen by going all the way down to the bottom and then it's going to say add a new account. Or we can do this of course in the chart of accounts. You could jump over to the chart of accounts. I'm going to do it here this time because this is probably what you're going to be doing most of the time. Your, your default is to say, hey, is this account there? If it is, use whatever account is there and only add new accounts when you need to. So I'm going to go to the drop down. I'm going to say that this is going to be uh, the, the type of account. So select the drop down. It's not an expense. It's going to be an asset. I'm looking for property, plant, and equipment. So I'll pick that one up. And then uh, the account name, I'm going to call it furniture and fixture. So I'm going to call it furniture and fixture. I'm going to try to respell this and see if I can get that right. And then I'm not going to put an ID or account number here. You could uh, look into that. I'm going to leave it the way it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. So there we have it. So we applied it out uh, to furniture and fixture. Now I'm going to check it off as something that we have reviewed. So we've reviewed it now. I'm going to check it off, make it green, then see what happens to our financial statements. I'm going to go on back to the first tab over here. I'm going to update. So this is going to be our balance sheet. We know that now, of course, it's still in cash and we've reallocated the cash. So the cash is still there. All the transactions affected cash, up increases and decreases, no real change. What changed here now is we have the uh, long-term asset now, that being the furniture and fixture. So we have the furniture and fixture. If I was to open that up, we're going to see the detail of that transaction, Amazon, and then you can even drill down to that transaction as well, which will get you back to the data input screen. And then here is the data input screen. So then I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to close this back out and that'll take us back to uh, the balance sheet. Note there's no effect on the income statement other than we kind of re we actually removed an amount from the uncategorized expenses. Notice this uncategorized expenses was including all the items that were decreases before because it assumed all decreases were, were something that's going to make the uh, uh, be expenses go up and the net income to go down. That included that $7,000 amount. We took it out of here, didn't put it into another expense as we did last time, putting the last one into utilities, but rather putting it into a uh, asset account, that being the furniture and fixtures. Now we're going to do the same thing for this one right here. You'll notice this one, another large dollar amount went to Office Depot. We're going to recategorize that also to furniture and fixtures. That means it's going to come out of this uncategorized area. That's the default for everything that's going to decrease going into here. We're going to take it out of here and we're going to put it once again back to the balance sheet account. So that's going to be our next one. So I'm going to go back to the first tab. I'm going to then go down to this, uh, the 16,000 it was, there it is, to Office Depot. I'm going to recategorize this one. And I'm going to bring in this to the new account that we just set up, which is going to be way down in the assets. Notice that most of the time when you have something coming out of your checking account, uh, decreasing cash, it's going to be some type of expense usually. But these are going to be the exceptions. So I'm spending more time. Note, we're spending more time here. So there it is, furniture and fixtures, checking it off. With the exceptions that you might see in practice where most of the outflows will probably be typical kind of expenditures that would go to an expense type of account. So there's going to be that item. Again, if you look at an Office Depot, it's another one where you might say if it's under a certain dollar amount, then it's probably maybe office supplies and you kind of group everything into office supplies. If it's over a certain dollar amount, then you got to think, well, is this something I'm going to have to put on the books as an asset and then depreciate it? And then because you want to track those. And once we have them tracked in the assets, not only is it not distorted in the income statement, but we also have the inf information there that we can then give to the tax preparer at the end of the year because they need that information to... Uh, input the tax depreciation on it and whatnot. So there we have that information. If I go back up to the uh, balance sheet and we update that report, let's see what happens. The checking account still is what it is, but now in the furniture and fixture, we now have that 23000 in the furniture and fixture now. And if I open that account up, then we can see the detail for it, which should now include two accounts. So here it is. We have the 16 and the 7. Now, these are not decreasing the net income. They're not expenses now. We took them out of the expenses. When will, we, when will we expense them? We will expense them in the form of depreciation. So we'll have to think about the depreciation. And you may uh, think about talking to your tax professional to help you with the depreciation and what type of method you should use because you're going to have to, at a minimum, need the tax depreciation to, to calculate your taxes and then think about whether you want to deviate from that for book depreciation having a different depreciation method so but in any case these fixed assets you're going to have to give them you know for taxes a list of the fixed assets 
that you have purchased equipment, you know, and uh, furniture and fixture and whatnot, large type of business purchases. If we go back to the income statement side of things and, and we update this report, we'll see now that this item down here for the uncategorized expenses now does not include these two these two expenditures that we made for these large capital purchases instead of pulling them into the utilities or another expense as we did with the utilities we uh put them on the books as an asset so we see that large sixteen thousand dollar amount it's not there anymore because we recategorized it so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here